In a recent interview with CNBC, Tom Lee, co-founder of Fundstrat Global Advisors, shed light on his optimistic outlook for the stock and cryptocurrency markets as the year closes, regardless of the U.S. election outcome. Lee believes the market is poised for a robust rally into year-end, driven by a combination of economic resilience, seasonal trends, and investor sentiment. His insights carry particular weight in the context of Bitcoin, which has historically shown correlations with broader market optimism. For crypto investors, Lee's predictions might signal a continuation of BTC's upward movement, reflecting a larger shift in how institutional and retail investors see crypto as a high-growth asset class amid broader market positivity. Tom Lee's rationale for the bullish market outlook stems from a series of factors that he believes will support equity and crypto price growth through year-end. First, he points to seasonal strength, a common phenomenon where markets typically perform well in the last quarter of the year as portfolio rebalancing and year-end investments fuel buying pressure. Additionally, Lee cites the gradual resolution of economic uncertainties that have kept investors on edge in recent months. As the Federal Reserve eases up on aggressive interest rate hikes, investors anticipate greater stability in monetary policy, a signal of confidence for both stocks and Bitcoin. But Lee's optimism isn't just rooted in traditional financial markets. He views Bitcoin as an emerging force that could play a unique role in the year-end rally. With inflation concerns fading, some investors are looking beyond traditional assets and seeking alternative stores of value. Bitcoin, long championed as digital gold by proponents like Michael Saylor, offers a hedge against uncertainties while also benefiting from a risk-on environment. If the overall sentiment remains positive, BTC could follow suit, potentially entering a new rally phase that rides alongside stock market gains. Historically, Bitcoin's price movements have shown significant overlap with stock market trends, particularly during periods of increased risk appetite. If Lee's forecast holds, Bitcoin could see renewed buying pressure, leading to a potential rally as investors look to diversify portfolios with high-performing assets. This rally would also be bolstered by what Lee describes as growing institutional adoption, a trend that has amplified Bitcoin's credibility in the financial world and opened up crypto assets to larger pools of capital. For BTC, this influx of institutional interest provides liquidity and stability, reducing volatility while also setting up the asset for steady price appreciation. Of course, the looming U.S. election presents some uncertainties, but Lee remains confident that, regardless of the outcome, market structures are positioned for growth. Any post-election clarity would likely reduce volatility, which could lead to a more sustained BTC price rise, particularly if market sentiment turns overwhelmingly positive. In an atmosphere of post-election optimism, Bitcoin could benefit from renewed retail and institutional demand, driving its price up toward new resistance levels. Lee's bullish year-end prediction aligns with growing sentiment that crypto assets are becoming integral to diversified portfolios. For investors, this presents a unique opportunity, as BTC could ride the tailwinds of broader market strength to new heights. With the markets set up for a very good rally, as Lee puts it, the year-end could see Bitcoin and stocks moving in tandem toward a powerful upward trajectory. Whether it reaches previous highs remains to be seen, but the setup for BTC's potential rally alongside stocks certainly has investors watching closely. Listen to Lee's analysis with CNBC. Like, comment, and share the video. Also subscribe to the channel to get notification of more videos like this. Would you say, towards the last time you were on, you talked about the Trump trade being pretty strong. Um, a lot of things turned back to reversed. Uh, DJT reversed. Bitcoin uh, didn't hold, uh, didn't move into the mid 70s, got in the low 70s. I don't know whether the banks and other Trump trades changed, and all the betting markets certainly moderated late last week, came back a little bit. Do you think, do you have a change in, a, in your opinion on the election now? Um, well, it does seem like over the last four or five days, the, the election really narrowed when you look at betting markets or the polls. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily trust polls, but I think the quality and the adjustments of the polls have made them more accurate. So I think it, it is really a toss-up, and it's, 
it's going to be a, a very close election. And something our clients are preparing for, because we did a survey last week, 76% don't think we'll have a winner declared election night. Mm. And 43% roughly expect it one week after. So I think markets are kind of bracing for this period of uncertainty. I think that's why many of the trades have reversed. We've also heard about some of the trading houses that are not going to be putting any software updates in this week, even um, some people who want to be here rather than overseas to make sure they're closer on the ground to see what happens too. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a week where there's going to be a lot of worry. Um, one thing I'm, I was thinking about over the weekend though is I think the market's fear of uncertainty will peak before it's very likely it peaks before the election outcome is actually decided. These signals that we've been looking at, one of the things, I don't know if you read about it, and I think we talked about it maybe during commercial break last week, one of the, one of the things that's happened in the polls is, is the view that there's a lot more women going, going to, uh, to vote than before. But that these signals, whether it be Bitcoin or whether it be DJT stock or whether it be the betting markets, may also all be off, if this is true, on the, on the assumption that actually there are, are, is a very small percentage of the people in the betting markets who are women, for example. There's a very small percentage of people who are women who actually trade in Bitcoin, not who own Bitcoin, but who trade in Bitcoin. Uh, very uh, small group of women who are trading in DJT stock. What do you think of that? Uh, I think there's some credence to that just because we know, like when you look at the Iowa polls, it was really the senior women voters that right. changed a lot. and. Uh, you're right, these markets can be narrow um, and they're very responsive to just changes in liquidity and it is, I think it's a very tight race. I mean, it's, it's going to be very close. I think anyone who thinks that they know who's going to win is, is, is really playing with fate because I think it's a very tight race. Yeah. It's interesting from uh, when you, when polls close too because we've got I mean, there's a couple here, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia are, are all East Coast. So, you know, if you have some definitive answers, they also, you know, supposedly Virginia and New Hampshire are, are closer than people uh, in the, in the uh, Harris camp would like. So there, there could be surprises early on. Just wonder how long it takes when you have so many more people who have voted early and mail or, or mail-in um, yeah. vote, votes too. Those take longer to tally. So, I, I mean, you, you might just by default be... Like last time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually voted last week and it, it was, there were, I actually had to wait yeah. for a lot of people. I mean, turnout is really what's going to swing this election. Other than the election. Because the elections, once, that's, some, that's sort of what you hear about Wall Street. Elections don't really matter anyway. So if it is gridlock, which we don't know, but more likely, I think the odds are on that too. So you're still bullish. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm bullish only in the sense that election uncertainty has caused people to de-risk and cash to sit on the sidelines, but the fundamentals have been good. Earnings season's been very good. The Fed is dovish, and I, I don't think it's going to matter who ends up in the White House, even if it's split Congress or a sweep. I think markets do pretty well either way, so it sets up for a really good rally into year end. But when it starts in November is just what we don't know. No. So when you look at, what do you, we were talking about what Buffett's thinking with Apple or what he's thinking with bank. I mean, that's, that, you take Apple and a leading financial, and that covers a pretty big range of, of uh, the markets. And he, Andrew thinks he's building an ark. Could you really, it, it, it wouldn't work. There's too many species to bring on there with him. I don't, I'm just that. saying he's building a, a cash ark. Cash ark. An ark out of cash or something. Or is that what he's doing? He may be doing something else. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know part of it is he's anticipating capital gains taxes could change, so he's taking those gains now, but, and he's not necessarily having a big cost of money because he's earning 5%, but next year, you know, the, the cost of money is going to drop, so he, he'll have some pressure to deploy it.